Welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. In this video, we're going to examine how to read an analog meter. Uh, for today's video, we're going to look at the Simpson 260 meter. It's a classic meter. It's been around for many, many years. There are a number of variations of it. Uh, and it's, it continues to be sold and it's uh, still quite popular with technicians that use an analog meter. In order to utilize this, you plug in two probes and you're going to use the jacks in the lower left of the meter. And uh, typically we have the negative being the black probe and the positive being the red probe. Uh, and then on the left hand side you'll see a three position switch. Uh, that is the mode switch and it's pretty straightforward. The AC is for measuring AC voltages and currents. Uh, DC is for measuring DC voltage and current. And the DC is also used to measure resistance. Uh, and then you'll see there's also a minus DC. That's identical to the plus DC, excepting it internally switches the two probes. It's as if you put the red lead in the minus uh, jack and the uh, black lead in the plus jack. It just flips those internally for you in case you have to reverse polarity. And then the middle switch, perhaps the most important, that is the range switch. That is used to set the maximum voltage or current that you expect that you're going to measure. Uh, it also corresponds to what range, uh, uh, what scale you read. So the range on the switch, the number on the switch, corresponds to the maximum deflection or the full right-hand extreme of the meter in terms of the numbers you see on the meter reading. So you know which set of numbers to utilize. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, meter scale. Uh, the meter scale, the top scale, is the resistance scale. That's from doing all the resistance measurements. Uh, this scale is a little bit different than uh, the other scales for two reasons. Uh, number one, the uh, extreme right-hand side is actually the lowest uh, reading for resistance, and it increases as you go to the left. That's the reverse of all the other ranges. And the other thing that's unique about this is that it is nonlinear. Uh, almost all the other ranges are linear, uh, at least the ones we normally use. Uh, the low power uh, ohms uh, is also nonlinear, but uh, that's not used that terribly often. Uh, and uh, the audio one we'll talk about later on is also nonlinear. Uh, but most of them we use for voltage and current are linear. Okay, so the next scale down is that low power resistance I mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, what exactly is that? Uh, that is um, a way of measuring uh, resistance inside of a circuit when the components are still connected to other components within a circuit. Uh, when you're actually measuring resistance with a meter, you actually apply a voltage and the meter measures the current and then translates that current into a resistance. Uh, with the low power scale, the voltage that is applied is a small enough voltage that it will not forward bias any semiconductors. So your transistors will not be turned on and therefore will not interfere with the uh, uh, resistance measurement you're trying to take. Uh, so that gives you a, a bit more accurate reading if you're doing in-circuit uh, resistance measurements. And uh, just to re uh, remind you, it is always better to measure resistance out of the circuit, but that's not always practical. Okay, so what range um, scale do we use for different ranges? Uh, first off, we're going to utilize the black scale and the black numbers in the middle here for all of your DC readings for DC voltage and DC current. It's the black scale and the black numbers. When you get to AC, it's a bit different. Uh, you're still reading the black numbers, but you're going to read the red scale. Okay, so all your AC readings for voltage and current uh, will be reading the red scale, but the black numbers. All right. Um, you will also see on this illustration uh, this arc here that shows up as black, and that's just something uh, in terms of the way this photographed. Actually, what that is, is a mirror. And the mirror is there 
in order to reduce parallax error. So the way you use that is that when you put your face above the, um, the scale here, you should see the indicator, but you should not see the indicator reflected in the mirror. Uh, if you see a reflection of the indicator, that tells you that your face is not perpendicular to the meter and you're going to get parallax error. Uh, the reflection of the indicator should be directly under the indicator and that removes any parallax error. You're going to see that mirrored scale uh, on all good quality meters. Uh, again, to eliminate that parallax error. You should not see the reflection of the indicator. It should be hidden by the indicator itself when you're reading this correctly. All right, um, resistance readings, of course, I mentioned should be done out of circuit. And the low power is to make sure your semiconductor is not turned on. I uh, mentioned that a moment ago. Uh, let me mention while we're here, uh, this particular range switch is set to the off position. Now, the only uh, internal power supply here is a battery uh, that applies a little voltage if you're taking a resistance measurement. And if you don't have leads plugged in or if leads are not touching, uh, you're not going to be drawing any power from those batteries. And you're also not going to draw power from the batteries if you're on voltage or current scale. So what is the off position? Well, the off position actually goes one step further and puts a short across the meter movement. And the reason for that is it dampens the movement. And if you uh, have a mechanical jolting, uh, the meter doesn't get jostled as much. It, it uh, slows down the way that meter responds because of the short circuit. Uh, so that uh, gives some a little bit of protection to the meter movement itself by putting it in the off position. That's why they call it the transit position. All right, and then the right-hand side, you're going to see a knob. It's called the Ohm's Adjust, and that is used every time you take a resistance reading. Uh, what you'll do is you'll touch the leads together and adjust that knob until you get a zero reading. If you don't get a zero reading, your resistance uh, measurement is going to be incorrect. Uh, and really important here, every, every time you change the range, if you have uh, R times 1 and change to R times 100, for example, you must readjust that zero setting. Every time you change the range, you have to adjust that zero again. Really, really important. You're not going to get correct resistance readings. All right, so how do we do this resistance measurement? Let's go through. We'll start with resistance and work our way down. We'll do resistance and DC and then AC. Uh, so let's say we're measuring resistance here and we're on the R times 1 scale. So we're going to be reading the very top scale. And remember, we're reading uh, from zero on the right-hand side to maximum on the left-hand side here. So I'm zooming in on the scale here. We see the indicator is between 8 and 10. And uh, then we have a large hash mark right in between. Well, that's halfway there, so that must be the 9 ohms. So our reading is somewhere between 9 ohms and 10 ohms. And then there's another smaller hash mark there, again halfway. So that corresponds to 9.5 ohms. So our indicator is actually closer to the 10. Uh, and we kind of kind of guess how much closer here. And I'm going to call that 9.8. So we're reading the hash marks. And then we're also guessing the distance between the hash marks. And that means that last digit is uh, a little bit of an educated guess. It's a judgment call as to what that last digit is based upon where the indicator is relative to the hash marks. How far is it between the hash marks? So my estimation is that's reading 9.8 for that particular reading. Let's look at another one. Uh, this time we're on the R times 100 scale. So we'll zoom in on a meter again we see that that is right on the 3. So we take that reading of 3 and multiply by 100 because we're on the R times 100 scale, and we get 300 ohms for this particular reading. Again, remember, prior to doing this, we're always adjusting that ohms adjust by touching the leads together and making sure we get a zero reading. Otherwise, these readings are not going to be accurate. So we start at the R times 1 for the first example, when we switched to R times 100, we had to re-zero the meter. Very, very important. 
Okay, we re-zero the meter again. We're going to switch to the 1K scale. So after you switch to 1K, then you re-zero the meter. And we get this reading uh, across perhaps a different resistor. So let's zoom in and interpret what this one means. Well, it's between the 3 and the 4. And uh, we can kind of count the small hash marks and say uh, there are five of them uh, between the uh, larger 3 and 4. So each one is worth 2 tenths. So 3.2, 3.4, 3 3.6 I don't have labeled. And our indicator is right on 3.8. So our reading is 3.8, it's on the 1K scale, so 3.8 times 1K gives us 3.8 kilo ohms. 3.8 kilo ohms. All right, and then there's a 10K scale. Let's do that one also. Uh, so we'll zoom in on the reading. Again, we have zeroed it right after we adjusted to 10K. Now we're taking the reading, and we see our reading is somewhere between 10 and 15. And if we kind of count the hash marks there, we see each one is worth basically one. We go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15 again is a large hash mark. So we are somewhere between the 12 uh, and the 13, but it's really close to the 12. So I'm going to call that 12.1. 12.1 times 10k is a multiplier. I get 121 kilo ohms. 121 kilo ohms for this reading. All right, what happens if we were to measure DC? Well, with DC, we don't have to worry about that ohms adjust anymore. That was only applicable to resistance readings. So now we're going to measure voltage. We're on the 10 volt scale, so we have to select what we're going to use for numbers here. So we have to look on the right hand edge, and we're going to be looking at these black numbers, and we see a 10 right there. So we're going to be reading the bottom set of numbers. Uh, since we're on DC, we're reading the black scale. So the black scale with the bottom numbers. So let's zoom in there. Remember, we're reading the bottom set of numbers. So on the left here, uh, this hash mark is going to correspond to 4 volts. This one over here is 6 volts. So halfway here, this is 5 volts. And so between here is 4 and here is 5. So these small hash marks are 2 tenths of a volt, 4.2. 4.4, 4.6, this hash mark is 4.8, this one is 5. Well, it's just a little bit more than halfway there. So halfway would be 4.9. I'm going to call it 4.91 because it's a little past halfway. And again, that's a judgment call. You may interpret that a little bit differently, but you should be really close to that. So I'm going to call that 4.91 volts. 4.91 volts. Okay, here's another reading. This time we're on the 25 volt scale. Now, when we go here to determine which set of numbers to read, we run into a little bit of a problem because there is no 25. However, there's a 250, and we can take that 250 and divide it by 10. So we can use the top set of numbers, but just remember to divide by 10, whatever our reading is. So let's zoom in and determine the reading now. Uh, we're reading the top set of numbers, dividing by 10. So this is 10 volts. This is 15. So halfway is 12 and a half volts. Okay. And uh, this is 12 and a half. This is 15. So 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half, 14. Okay. So somewhere between 13 and a half and 14 volts. 13 and a half and 14. So how far is it? Well, I'm going to call it 13.7 volts. 13.7. Again, don't just stop at 13. You've got to judge how far it is between these small hash marks. All right, so 13.7 volts DC. Uh, what happens if we go to AC? Well, with AC, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, with AC, we're going to read again the black numbers just like we did a moment ago, but this time we're going to read the red scale. All right. So reading it a little bit differently, reading off the red scale because it's AC. So let's zoom in. Uh, we're looking down here at the red scale, and uh, we're set to the 50-volt uh, range. Okay, so we're going to be looking here and say, okay, 50 is the middle set of numbers. So this hash mark here must be 20, and this is 30. Okay, 
Uh, so this is 25, and this is 30, so 26, 27, 28, and 29. It's somewhere between 28 and 29. How far is it? Well, I'm going to call it a 28.8. Uh, you may maybe you interpret it as 28.7. Uh, again, that last digit is subject to interpretation there. That's a little bit of your judgment. Uh, but uh, it's somewhere around 28.8 volts. So important thing here, when you on the AC scale, you're reading the black numbers, but the red scale. All right, uh, so that pretty much covers most of what you're going to be uh, utilizing. Again, the low power when you're reading the uh, low power ohms. Uh, but here are some other specialized ones. Uh, this bottom red scale is if you're on the 2.5 volt range. Okay, they have a special scale for that particular range, 2.5 volts AC. Then the green readings are for a special uh, adapter that you use. It's called a clamp-on, uh, where you literally clamp around a wire and measure the magnetic field to determine the current. Uh, with that clamp-on attachment, you'd be reading these green numbers uh, that are shown there. And uh, the bottom scale there is a decibel scale. That's for making audio measurements. And uh, one thing I want to clarify here, this kind of corresponds to what you'll see in what's called a VU meter. Uh, however, this is only good on the Simpson. It's only good for tones. It's not good for actual audio like voice or music. And the reason is because a VU meter, which is designed for voice and music, has certain what's called ballistics. And that's the way the meter reading responds to very fast changes. And that's defined very, very particularly uh, for reading those uh, audio readings for, vocal, for uh, audio, uh, voice, and music. Um, this reading on the Simpson uh, corresponds to that, but only if the reading is steady and not changing. So you'd be using a tone for this, and then you get an exact correspondence to what you would have with the VU meter. Uh, so just want to clarify that. All right, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of introduction to how to read an uh, analog multimeter. Uh, other meters other than the Simpson are going to be read in a very similar fashion. I think you could probably figure that out if you understand what I covered in this video. Hope you enjoyed watching and stay tuned for more.